like to call the order this regular meeting of the Lennox Township Board of Trustees, May 8th, 2023, at 6.30 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of meeting agenda. I have one slight change to the agenda, and that's a request to move item A down and make it become item H, and all others just be up one. Under I make a motion that we approve the agenda with the movement as presented. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Gurley, seconded by Treasurer Hollow. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion passes. Approval minutes. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes of the April 3rd, 2023, April 24th of 2023, which was a budget workshop and April 25th, 2023, which was a special meeting. Second. I have a motion by Clerk Candell, seconded by Trustee Gurley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right, public announcements. Public comment. I do have one. You do have something? I do have one. Yes, uh, the Lenox New Haven Memorial Day Parade will be Monday the 29th, uh, we have a ceremony at the cemetery. Uh, it's not much of a parade, it's just like a procession. And then uh, ambulance be serving a hot dog lunch after, at, at about 1 o'clock after the cemetery service. Thank you. Public comment. Public comment. Public comment. Public comment. All right, consent agenda. All items listed on this consent agenda are considered routine by the township board. It will be enacted by one motion. According to established township meeting rules, there will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the public or board so requests at or prior to the meeting. In which event the chair of the meeting may remove such items from the consent agenda for discussion and consideration under agenda item equal. Approval of the consent agenda shall be by a majority roll call vote of those present and voting. Under the consent agenda, we have under uh, consent agenda orders and bills, during the month we paid $397,930.94. Currently we have $270,560.94. For a total of six hundred sixty-eight thousand five hundred and fifty-four cents. I will make a motion to approve the consent agenda and the orders and bills in the amount of six hundred sixty-eight thousand five hundred dollars fifty-four cents. I second. I have a motion by Treasurer Hall, seconded by Trustee Clerk, the Deputy Clerk we call roll. Arnold? Aye. Clipper? Aye. Early? Aye. Reader? Aye. Kendall? Aye. All right, item removed for consent agenda, public safety report, new firefighter ceremony. Just one. Good evening, uh, honorable township officials and guests in the audience. Tonight I want to invite uh, here to the podium with me Two new probationary firefighters. There's a bit of a story behind one. It's a little difficult for me to call her probationary. Uh, but invite them uh, up here to the podium. Tonight they'll be uh, taking their oath and receiving their badges. These are John Olowski and Sue Baggins. They can also bring with them uh, a member of their family who we're going to ask to pin their badges on in just a few minutes. I also have here with me tonight our fire chief, Marty Hartway and our assistant fire chief, Cam Trauma. You know, this always feels like a very formal event, and, and well, it should be. These people put in a lot of work to get to tonight, but 
there's a personal side to all of these young people and their stories. And just being very brief, because I know the agenda is long, I want to mention something a little bit about both of them. John Olowski, uh, we're privileged to have him here in our community. He served at our fire department and our DPW, and most recently our EMS. I have never in my career met a young man that when he walks into any building, he is so beloved from the moment he goes through the door. That's a lot to be said in this world of young people who seem to be able to spend more time looking at their phone than communicating. I don't know what his parents did, but I know his, I believe his dad is here with him tonight, and I wish he could bottle it because we could sell it uh, to other parents. So thank you, John, and thank you to your family. The other one, really, uh, what a crazy story for me personally and for her as well. Sue Baggins mentioned tonight uh, to me that she received her first firefighter badge 36 years ago. She's been uh, with the last fire department for about 10 years in a role as a dispatcher, uh, and then as a dispatcher with a medical first responder, and now tonight we will swear her in as a firefighter. Sue doesn't know this, actually, but as a young paramedic, she was one of my mentors. When Sue came into the emergency room at McLaren, all the young paramedics looked at her and said, we want to be like her. And the reason we said it was because there's a certain time in your life when you're sitting in a room and someone walks in and they command respect. They command respect not because of the tint of their badge being gold or silver. They command their respect because the other professionals around them recognize that just maybe they are, in fact, the smartest person in the world. Sue was always that person to many of us in public safety. And so it's a real privilege tonight to be able to recognize my mentor by the swearing her in. With that, if I could ask, if I could ask you both to raise your right hand and just answer, I do or I will the following. I recognize at all times I am a public servant and that ultimately I am responsible for the safety and well-being of myself, my colleagues, and all citizens. I will accept responsibility for my actions by exhibiting honesty and integrity. I will promote diversity within our organization and ensure fair and open access to all who call for service. I will observe the highest principles of fairness and strive to meet those values which reflect honor upon the township and myself. I will seek to maintain and improve my professional knowledge, skills, and competence. Now do you swear to follow and uphold the department's SOPs, state and federal laws, as well as the state of Michigan and U.S. Constitution? Finally, do you affirm you will not permit or cause any employee or agent acting on your behalf to do anything which would constitute a violation of this oath. Thank you. Chief, will you present their badges? Are they, are they yeah. Board members and citizens at large, on behalf of the Lenox Township Public Safety Department, it is my privilege to formally introduce to you these sworn professionals who I can now attest are fully prepared to serve both you and our citizens. Thank you very much.
Good evening, board. This evening we're back in front of you. Uh, we're requesting an uh, approval this evening as we have an item that should have, I thought we were moving around, but uh, one of the things that the board had asked for was the engineering tab drawings. Those are also in front of you this evening for the building. Those layouts are there. Uh, one thing that we spoke to both of the engineer kit folks that put in bids was verifying the HVAC items. HVAC also verified that they will be giving us a final drawing before they actually start the installation. Uh, they would not be giving us drawings prior to that because if they did not win the bid, they're not wasting their time or their money. Uh, so, once again this evening, we are back in front of you at this board asking that we go forward with the HVAC bid that, that was put on hold last month and requesting approval to award that bid for the Community Senior Center to Hutchinson Mechanical for a total of $68,700. At this point in time, we'll open up for any questions, concerns. Like to make to make a motion that we award the HVAC system for the community senior center building at 63975 Gratiot to Hutchinson Mechanical in the amount of $68,700. I'll second. I have a motion by Clerk Kandel, second by Treasurer, Treasurer Holloman. Dr. Clerk, please follow roll. Kandel? Aye. Connell? Aye. Clifford? Nay. Reader? Aye. Gurley? Aye. All right. She's a, yeah. Number 10, you. Just as one quick update for you so that the board and the community is well aware, as of May 15th, we will start uh, the roof removal. All the equipment will be in to remove everything off the roof. That will start as of May 15th. So we'll see activity and equipment out there. Thank you. All right, on number 10, new business item A, Community Center Engineering CAD Drawings Project. Mr. Graba. I do apologize. I thought I grabbed both things when I came up. All right, this evening we're in front of you again. Uh, one of the key items that uh, going through with this community senior center building was to get some preliminary CAD drawings as far as some of the structural changes in the interior. We're not changing anything on the exterior except for updating. The interior structural changes and layout and plan drawings. This was put out for bid. We did put it out. We had had three interested individuals. One of them was from a community building department that uh, never came out and walked through the facilities, never followed through on the RFP items. With that, we wound up going down to two that actually bid out. They came out, they both spent an extensive period of time looking, going through, and giving, one of them came back with a preliminary drawing we updated that, we sent it back to them. Uh, we actually are down to, I want to say, the third or fourth drawing that we had looked at and went through. We had a total of two that actually presented. As you'll see this evening in front of you, there's a significant difference. Um, and I believe the understanding was not clear but we asked them for a very specified item for architectural work only and the engineering drawings and the interior and review of the plans. One of them actually came back wanting us to uh, go forward getting permission at the planning commission, so on and so forth. Those are in-house items that are handled that go through our departments directly. With that being said, there was two bids that came in. Frank Solomon, architect, had bid in for a total of 11,000 for the engineer drawings and verifications. Anderson AEW, which is known as Anderson Eckstein Westrick, 
came in for a total bid of $64,000. As I said, there was a significant bid difference. Although we did go back through, review, and verify exactly what they did, Frank Sullivan Architect Engineering came back and did the drawings, gave us the verifications. Anderson Eckstein West has yet to produce drawings. So at this point in time, I'm recommending for us to move forward with Frank Solomon, the architect, for us to work internally and be able to provide this. We do have a time schedule that this board has looked at and we'd like to prefer to keep moving forward with it. With that, Supervisor's Office would recommend that we move forward with Frank Solomon, the architect, for a total of 11,000 for drawings and specs required under the remodeling project of that facility. Open for any questions or concerns. I would like to make a motion to authorize the Community Center CAD slash engineering drawings project to be awarded to the low bidder Frank Salomon at the cost of eleven thousand dollars. I second. I have a motion by Clerk Dan Nelson and my trustee Cliff me to have clerk please call the roll. Kendall? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Reader? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Hano? Aye. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Item B, legal opinion authorization request. Madam Clerk? Um, this request comes from our planner, and he has requested that the board authorize us to get a legal opinion from our attorney regarding a company wishing to do some development over at Bay River, the PUD. There's some question as to what is allowed through that PUD. So um, I would, at this point, make a motion to authorize Al Addis's, the Addis Law Firm to provide us with a legal opinion regarding the Bay River Planning and Development. I second that. I have a motion by Clerk Van Dell, second by Trustee Clifford. May the Deputy Clerk please call the roll. Kendall? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Tano? Aye. Reeder? Aye. All right. Item C, Macomb County Drain Maintenance Match Program. Mr. Hackabin. Give me one second here to set up my operation. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Lennox Township. Um, I am Dan Acovetti, uh, Deputy Macomb County Public Works Commissioner, and I thank you on behalf of Candace Miller for allowing uh, us to share some of the things that we've done and to discuss a request for Lennox Township to participate in our 2023 Drain Ranch program. Lennox Township has approximately 37 miles or 195,000 lineal feet of Macomb County Public Works jurisdiction drains. It's important to note that a couple of your major water courses, such as the Salt River and Coon Creek, our eagle assets and natural water courses. We are extremely proud under Commissioner Miller's leadership throughout the last several years to actively uh, renovate, re restore, reshape, and, uh, and remove blockages from our entire four million mile county drain network. And we're extremely excited that Macomb County Board of Commissioners um, has appropriated substantial resources in the form of a match program for us to touch some of these drains and fix some of these drains, many of which haven't been, um, haven't had substantial work on since their inception. Some of them date back to the early 1900s, many of them uh, date back to the 1600s. 
some of the one, one thing that I'd like to point out in various communities I, I, uh, I speak with and that we deal with when it comes to the movement and management of stormwater is what watersheds you're, you're involved you're, you belong to and uh, Lennox Township has got a lot of great um, a lot of sand and uh, a lot of fall from one end to the other. The Bell River watershed, the Salt River, and the North Branch of the Clinton River are pretty substantial watersheds. And this line right here is essentially a break, a high point where the water that, uh, that hits on this in the, in the purple area is heading, heading through uh, Chesterfield and New Baltimore and out the Salt River, and the water that hits on this west side heads a total other direction. We also barely miss the, the uh, Bell River to your north and um, Anchor Bay watershed to the south. Some of the stuff that we do um, are blockages. These are two of the um, more impressive beaver dams, and both of them are were located in Lennox Township on the Richmond Relief Drain that we've removed over the last couple of years. These um, structures are not permitted, but uh, the builders and engineers that actually do this are, are actually fascinating creatures but they can cause substantial problems um, upstream and downstream. And these were two on the north end of Lennox Township that were actually causing problems um, to your neighbors to the north in the city of Richmond. I want to thank you for participating at the end of last year in the 2020 Match Program. This was a very nice project from 29 Mile Road to New Haven Road on the Ray Lennox Drain. Um, what we basically do with these um, these reconstruction projects is three three phases. We may do one, all, or or we may do all of them, or just one of them. But essentially, it's a reshape, uh, or it's a remove, remove blockage and deadfall, reshape the channel to the historical depth, and if necessary, restore that channel. Each one of those costs a different amount of funds. Um, and each one of them is uh, allowable under the drain code only on the Macomb County Public Works drains. Um, this, this, uh, this map over here, it shows the Public Works drains and on, on my screen here, you're seeing everything in, uh, in this green color, or a light blue color, those are, those are county drains. The rest of them are natural water courses and we do not have the authority to work on or the jurisdiction to work on. What, what the drain code allows us to do is manage that drain, that channel, and restore it to historical depth utilizing our maintenance contract. So hence, we do not need uh, additional public approvals. These all have easements in, uh, of record and they've all been established pursuant to the drain code. The, Anything you see here in blue, and I only got the two major ones drawn on, uh, drawn on this model, Salt River and, the, and the, the, the Coon Creek, and any other natural water horses, those are eagle. Those are eagle jurisdiction. If anyone is going to um, reshape or redo those drains, um, eagle approval uh, is, is, uh, is necessary. You can see there's some areas on the east side of the township that have no county drains that were, that were established. And those uh, nearly 40 miles is, is what we're charged with managing. What I'm here to talk about today is participating in a, the 2023 match program. And for you guys, I believe it might span two fiscal years. Uh, we are requesting to do a pretty substantial uh, program in Lennox Township, totaling $80,000 um, in total work. And we're requesting a $30,000 match from the township over the next uh, two years. I believe your fiscal year is uh, July to July, July 1st to June 30th. Last year, what you're looking at here is the Ray Lennox District, which established in 1961. We've worked on, and this, this uh, district spans not only Lennox Township, but also includes a, a portion of Ray Township. So the, 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 the township line is about right where my cursor is going. Last year, we worked with this Ray Township and did approximately 4,500 feet of clean up here. Um, and Lennox Township in this little green section, um, we did about 3,650 feet. What we're proposing is to skip over this piece in the middle and move from 28 Mile Road and 
to that drain's origin, um, which is the, 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 uh, the Coon Creek on the other side of Oma Road. And here's the reason why. After the uh, rainfall um, on April the 2nd, there is there was pretty substantial issues here upstream, and we feel that that uh, clean out downstream will help alleviate this potential property damage and structure damage and, and flooding that is occurring. Um, it should be noted that the, the culverts under the road um, are, are road commission jurisdiction, even though it is a county drain. If it's an MDOT road, we, that's MDOT's responsible for that. But we do have a very good working relationship and we're hoping to restore this entire section. Here's a couple of pictures of uh, that, that day on April the 2nd. This was Saturday after that approximate two inch water event that hit our area. And this was um, this is what it looked like a little uh, couple weeks afterwards, but it did take some time to recede. So what we believe uh, will be very helpful is a complete remove, reshape, and restore of approximately 6,520 feet of this drain, including um, removing deadfall and spot blockage and make sure that the drain positively flows. And we're happy that it will continue to look at this entire drainage district. This section will, um, will, will ensure that that entire district has had its hands on us. So that's, as, uh, that's the primary focus of this of this drain match program, and I do believe you have the documents, some documents in front of you. Another area is the Harrison and Deer Creek that we thought needed some attention. Now this could have, um, this piece of the project could actually change because there are substantial other areas in the township where that we do get calls. Not as much as some of our neighboring communities or the rest of, um, or the, or the, rest of the, uh, the county. And a lot of that is because of your soils, your grade, and I think just the, uh, the can-do attitude of your residents to actually uh, solve and maintain these drainage problems. So this 3,000 foot is, I, I wanted to look at as well, along the Harrison Drain and along this little section of the Deer Creek, which is 30 Mile Road and Bates. I do want to talk a little bit about the Deer Creek, if I could. Deer Creek is a, is a, is a uniquely different drain and, um, and, and many in Lennox Township. And what you're looking at here is, is the floodplain map. So we are responsible for the movement of water. And we have, we have easements that give us the rights to maintain and move that water on behalf of the district. The drainage district does not own the trees. The drainage district does not own the structures. We don't own um, those, those furnishings or those, uh, those items that are in the drain. So hence, all we can generally do is work, is work on the flow of the drain. Now, as we do that, it looks a lot better. You get, you get it to be a lot more aesthetically pleasing. Um, the complication with this Deer Creek is, even if we, we, we removed, and we will continue to remove these spot, um, the, the, the spot blockages, this whole area, which here you're looking at the Deer Creek from, from the beginning, uh, north of 31 mile where the flood plain starts all the way down to 26 mile and I left out the rest of the piece which uh, ultimately ends up in the north branch of the Clinton River is designed flood plain. and what that essentially means is that any um, any substantial rain event which, which might be two inches everything you see there in blue is designed to hold water and it is not a blockage issue so our primary focus is, is protecting property and protecting, uh, and protecting structures. We will um, do aggressive clean outs um, in the Deer Creek, but I just want to manage your expectations that if it is in this FEMA floodplain, that changes the game a bit for actually uh, lowering water, especially during um, heavy rain events. I would love to uh, answer any questions if you have any, and I have my, my map here that kind of can show uh, every, everything that, uh, or any questions that you have. One thing I thought was pretty interesting, here's the Deer Creek, it's, it's origin um, up here at the north end of the township by the Smith Drain. And ultimately it's, the section's about 10.3 miles and it ends at the north branch of the uh, Clinton River in the Comb Township. And there's a lot of fall. Uh, 
uh, elevation here, these aren't exact. It's about 670 here at the top end of the township, and I'm sure Sir Matt um, knows all about these, uh, the, these elevations. And looking at these elevations and how much fall you have um, is, I don't know, it's fascinating stuff for me because I'm in the, uh, I'm in the drain business and infrastructure business. Um, one other thing I do want to point out is I appreciate Lennox Township, your township engineer, and your leadership. Um, another thing we're working on is, and we have been working on, is our MS4 permitted the new stormwater requirements. A lot's happened on stormwater in the last uh, several years, and essentially new developments as they come in are, uh, are required to not only retain the stormwater, 5.2 inches worth, but they're also required to have a water quality feature. That's some of the new developments that are, that are, uh, that are currently coming through. You'll see pretty big basins, and that basin will retain that 5.2 inches of water. Um, it's intended to clean um, in either a four bay or a separate smaller basin like you see here. Um, clean the first flush before it leaves, that first one inch. Um, and the rest of the water is retained and released at a, um, as, at a rate and a volume that will ensure that the downstream um, communities in that drainage district or, or parcels in that drainage district are not impacted. And um, we, uh, we again want to thank uh, uh, Lennox Township for participating and for adapt adopting those standards because in the long term, we're a long ways behind, but the answer that's going to go a long ways to solving our long term flooding issues. So, with that, I would, will ask any questions, uh, answer any questions that you have, and we are really looking forward to ramping up Lennox Township's program um, and finishing up that, that section um, of the Ray Lennox drain. I have a list here that includes the Norton, 7,000 foot of the Deer Creek that is on my, uh, I guess, hot list um, to keep an eye on and look at, and we can work on any and all of these drains um, as issues issues come up. And on behalf of Candace Miller, I appreciate uh, Lennox Township support and um, look forward to answering questions and participating in this year's program. Any questions? Board. This evening we're coming forward requesting that the Township of Lennox acknowledge with a resolution established in April as a 911 Operator Appreciation Month. If you'd like, we can go ahead and read that, or would the clerk like to read that? Would you like me to, or? Sure, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> it's my turn. I was actually coming up to remove stuff and Mr. Reader caught me off guard. This is a resolution coming in front of the board establishing at a regular meeting in Lennox Township Board of Trustees held tonight in Township offices at 63 775 Gratiot Avenue in Lennox, Michigan. 
48050 on the 8th day of May 2023 commencing at 6.30 p.m. Whereas nationwide over 35,000 911 operators are presently engaged in the occupation of furnishing immediate first responder assistance in crisis situations to the public at large. And as whereas nationwide 77.8% of 911 operators are women, while 22.2% are men. And whereas 911 operators are consummate professionals who have received extensive training and have exhibited both intelligence and emotional stability in order to successfully perform an extraordinary difficult task under extreme stress. And whereas it is well documented that the constant crisis of performing as a 911 operator takes an emotional toll upon 9-11 operators resulting in a multitude of stress-related issues. And whereas it's been documented nationwide that the average 9-11 operator will take over 2,480 calls in a calendar year. And whereas at a federal level, the week of 9, April 9 through April 15th has been previously declared National Public Safety Telecommunication Week honoring all 9-11 operators. And whereas the Board of Trustees in the Township of Lennox wishes to increase public awareness that the dedication, professionalism, and sacrifice made on behalf of the public at large by 9-11 operators. Now therefore, upon motion by the Board and supported by the Board, it is hereby resolved and established as follows. It is hereby ordered and declared that the month of April shall be deemed as 9-11 Operator Appreciation Month within the Township of Lennox in order to give proper recognition, deserved appreciation, and increased public awareness for the overall performance of 9-11 operators who daily in their jobs meet the challenges faced as true first responders, providing care, comfort, and protection to the general public. Any and all resolutions and conflict herein, here within are repealed only to the extent necessary to give full force and effect to the foregiving provisions. This resolution is deemed severable should any provisions, clause, word, or sentence be deemed unenforceable, and the remaining shall be continue to stay in force, full force and effect. With that, requesting the board go ahead and resolve and make the resolution adopted. I make a motion to approve the resolution declaring the month of April to be 9-11 Operator Appreciation Month. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Clifford, seconded by Trustee Gurley. We have a deputy clerk please call the roll. Clifford? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Honnold? Aye. Kendall? Aye. Reader? Aye. I think this motion then, or this resolution then becomes number 2023-4. Correct. All right, item E, park plan amendment. So this has gone to the Recreation, Parks and Recreation Committee. This has come by, this is recommended by them. This has been done after the hard work of our engineer and our township DPW. And at this time, we are looking for a motion to adopt the new park plan as amended. Move to adopt the new park plan. Um, as presented, second. I have a motion by Court Candell, seconded by Trustee, sorry, Treasurer Honnold. It's been a long day. <laughs> May the Deputy Clerk please call the roll. Candell? Aye. Honnold? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Reader? Aye. Clifford? Aye. All right, item F, tons of trucks event date change authorization. So this also comes from the Parks and Recreation Committee. We're looking to change it from the weekend of the 9th of September to the weekend after. I believe that's the 14th? 16th. 16th. Yeah. It, that is because it conflicts with the uh, City of Richmond Good Old Days Parade. And not just the whole festival, and we're concerned about lack of availability. So we're looking to hold it the 16th of September. Um, make a motion to authorize the change of date of the Tons of Trucks event to September 16, 2023. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Hall, seconded by Clerk Candell. We have a deputy clerk, please call the roll. Candell? Aye. Honnold? Aye. Reader? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Reader? Aye. Honn
Connell? Aye. Kandel? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Reader? Aye. Gurley? Aye. All right, item G, Township Park Access Road. Mr. Trumbly. Oh, yes, good evening. Um, working in tandem with the one item that we just approved being the park plan, um, in order to start developing this property for our future park expansion, one of the first things we need to do is create an access road to be able to get to that property with the machinery is and equipment. The first two steps in order to do that access road would be a, a topo survey, basically a complete survey of the property uh, and de uh, developing a spec book for the design of that access road. So I come before you tonight uh, requesting uh, approval to move forward on those two items which we would have to do it regardless of how we move forward with that property. So working with our township engineer, Mr. Safe, uh, a total topographic survey for the property uh, would be for $47,863. And then to design and create a specs book to fit it out the project, we'd be looking at 76903 
Clifford? Aye. Kendall? Aye. Connell? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Reader? Aye. Thank you. Number 11, public comment. Tax Tribunal Legal Representation. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, retire to a closed session at 7.15 p.m. Second. I have a motion by Clerk Kandel, seconded by Trustee Clifford. May the Deputy Clerk please call the roll. Kandel? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Reader? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Connell? Aye.